Well, good morning, Rovers. Today is November 4th on Prince Edward Island, and we are going to have temperatures of 18 degrees Celsius. Now, yesterday was warm, today is warm, and the next few days are warm, so I'm taking advantage of those warm temperatures, and I'm going to build a wooden mast for Wave Rover. My name's Alan Mulholland. I'm a solo sailor, and this is the story of how I built my Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now, I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. So in many ways, making a mast out of an aluminum flagpole it's, it's easy and it's fast and it's what the plans actually talk about and they even give a couple of sources where you can source these flagpoles from. But I'm going to make Wave Rover's mast out of solid construction grade lumber that's easy to get and it's a low cost, low tech solution that just about anybody will be able to master. And that's keeping with the Wave Rover philosophy. Now let's crack on. So Lindsay, what are we doing? Uh, we're picking out lumber for Alan's mast, and we're just trying to get the straightest stuff possible. No knots, no rod, uh, no wane. Right, so this is just regular construction grade, two by six by 16 feet. And the big pile that you see just off here, that's the rejects. And this little pile down here, this is what we've selected. Now we also have selected two by eight by 16 feet for the lower portion of the mast. And we'll be scarfing all this together. And that's going to be really interesting, making a wooden mast for the Wave Rover 650. And then for the next few months, I left the lumber in a nice level, dry indoor area out of the sun until I needed it. Now I'm ready to start scarfing the lumber. So take a look at how nice it looks. This is construction grade, although we did select the very best of it. And remember, before you start cutting anything, draw up a plan. You know, make sure those scarfs are not on top of each other. Make sure you know what you're doing, where the lengths are going to be cut. All right, with a plan, we can now start cutting. So at this point, I should have two templates here of what should be uh, a scarfing ratio of 1 to 12. All right.
The board is then turned over, marked, and cut on its other edge. Reset the depth every few inches of length. Now remember, we're only roughing it out at this point. Well, I've made a bit of a mess here, but you know, you've got to crack an egg if you want to make an omelette. So here I have 12 scarf joints roughed out. So this is phase one. In phase two, I'm going to have to make a jig that's going to make all these identical. So they all fit together nicely when the big glue up happens. But you can see um, 12 and there's a couple on the other end there. So in the last scene, you saw me take the big blanks of wood here the two by eights and the two by sixes and you saw me take a saw to them and cut them down to well you know a scarf like joint but it's still a bit rough so the last eighth of an inch i'll take off with the uh, router and i'll be using the router um, sort of a router guide a scarfing guide that i've made and if you're interested about that um and there it is on the router. If you're interested about that, you would have seen me do the basic steps on this in an earlier video, and I'll, I'll put a link to that right away. And in that video, I scarf uh, plywood and the shear, and this is the very same technique. You can adapt those scarfing jigs for this very application. <laughs> Let's tighten that pretty tight. Okay, so... The first thing we want to do is we want to zero our router. So let me just get on that and go a little deeper. And you just want to do a little trial. You don't want to take off too much. I've actually seen carpenters just wear out their router by not doing this cut with the saws beforehand. It's just too much work for a router to take that much uh, wood off in a single pass. All I need to do at this point is just remove about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch. That's really good. Now I just like to hit it with the plane just to clean it up a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, that's great. We can uh, we can stop there. Um, this is ready now to uh, go mate with the its partner. Uh, okay, so I'm just prepping the mass now for its big glue up, and I don't know if you can pick it up here, but there's some planing marks on this because it is, after all, construction grade lumber. So I have to remove those in order to get a good glue joint. It really doesn't take much to remove these. It doesn't have to be perfect. So what I'm doing is I, I want a little V-notch trowel to help spread the glue out better. This is a piece of vinyl siding that I just kept over from uh, the soffit of our house. So I'm just going to run it through. So I'll be very careful when you do this. This stuff can shatter, but when it's warm like today, it's really easy to cut. Okay, so now we're getting ready to laminate these two layers together. It's going to be four layers all together to the mast, but you know, almost half of that will be taken off when the mast is rounded. Anyway, I just want to go over the procedure. I'm here with uh, Bill England from Ambler Odysseys, and I'll have a link to his channel as well, and also Stephen, who's behind the camera. You can't see him. We'll catch him a bit later. All right, so Guys, what, what I'm thinking is this bottom layer right here, that's going to be almost entirely gone when I've rounded the mass. So we're not going to worry about putting saber blocks. We'll just put the clamps directly on that. But on this upper section, I've got all kinds of excess ply here. We'll put that on top and keep the clamps from digging into this surface because this surface is the next surface we'll be laminating to. I'm going to start at one end and work our way forward. That's it for the briefing. Now it's time to crack on. There we go. Nice distribution of glue. And we didn't see Stephen yet. There's Stephen. Look at Stephen. He's wearing, he's in uniform. He's wearing his Wave Rover uh, shirt and rightly so because Stephen is going to be building a 650 shortly. Okay, so now we've got all the clamps on, every single clamp I own, and then, own and then considerably more from Bill, who's lent me, <laughs> you already heard that, quite a few of these. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Oh, you're welcome. Now, we've also used a few screws in what will be the waste wood to help uh, get uh, more clamping pressure. Nice. Okay, so right now what we've done is we've we've got our four laminations of uh, of of the two by eights. I need the clamps to laminate the last half of this, and there's a reason behind that. But in order to get the clamps, what I have to do now that everything's compressed, I'm just going to drive these screws in. <laughs> And with the screws driven in, that'll hold all these in place. It's been over two hours since we put this glue on. And they, they actually say after 30 minutes you can unclamp. But I just, there's a lot of tension in this because some of the wood has a little bit of twist. And you flatten that out with the clamps, secure it with the screws and the glues. So like I said, it's been a little over two hours. I need these clamps to clamp the last half of the fourth lamination. OK, 
day. So this is the last piece of wood that's going on to the mast. It's a 16-foot long 2x6. And this is a scarf joint right here. Um, and I'm scarfing them in place. So I'll be putting glue on here. I'll be mating this up. I've got some lines, index lines already indicated. Can you see them there? Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll be mating that up. I'll be clamping it on. And this is the last piece. Let's crack on with putting the glue on. Okay, so now this 2x6 right here. It's a beauty of a 2x6. It's very clear. Uh, we're going to be putting that on top of here, including the scarf. Um, what did I do? I took all the clamps off the first or the last lamination we did on the 2x8s and I'm using those clamps for up here because frankly I need more clamps so you can never have enough and I, and I really like to thank Bill for lending me all these so that's that's great. Anyway time to crack on with pouring the glue on. Next step is, let's see, put the cap on this, then we'll, uh, we'll spread that glue out. So again, using my homemade glue spreader, notch trowel. There's a liberal amount here on the scarf joint. The scarf joints are so important. Got our glue spread out really well. And now, index marks already on here I'm just going to drive a couple of fasteners in just to hold it in place to keep it from skating around should keep it from skating around and at this point I can just start clamping it's not going to move a lot it's uh, everything's straight it's been I've leveled the all the saw horses so we should have we should be gluing this into something that's going to be very straight So this time around on this last lamination, I'm not worried about compressing the, the surface of the 2x6 with the clamps because it's all going to get shaved off into a fairly small section up here. Like probably three quarters of this wood will have to be removed um, in, the final, in the final shaping. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. So now the mast is fully laminated. 
So, uh, and, and like I said now a few times, most of this wood is going to disappear entirely after it's been shaped. What are a few of the things that, um, you know, became apparent? Well, some of the wood has what's known as a twist. A twist is where in this plane right here, it's not flat, it has a bit of a turn. That's fine. You don't have to worry about a little bit of twist. You can pull that twist down just with the clamping pressure by starting at one end and working your way up to the other. Uh, another thing I dealt with was what's called crown. Crown is where the wood in this orientation is flat, but it forms a curve. Now that's actually not such a bad thing because you can use that to your advantage. If you have a curve going one way in one lamination, do the opposite on the next lamination. Get the curve going opposite. And to deal with it, because you don't want your mass following that, you secure one end and you start clamping and as you move up toward the other end of the board, you have someone on the end where they have plenty of leverage and they're pulling the board back and forth to straighten it on the line that you want it straightened on. Why is that such a, not such a bad thing? In fact, I'd almost say it's a good thing because it preloads the mast with stress. So the mast is struggling to go back to that curve, but we've countered it with the opposite curve and a big strong glue joint. So when you pre-stress something, you're loading in extra energy that it can take. Uh, we use this in the construction industry all the time. We pre-stress concrete for bridges. Uh, we pre-stress steel in the form of a camber. So it's a, it's a technique that gives you added strength. Anyway, really happy with how things turned out um, and uh, next week it's going to be all about the shaping of this mast. And as always Rovers, thanks for watching. Well the Wave Rover patrons with their pledges of support really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.